Hello and welcome to another video. This one's going to be a little bit different. I know, JavaScript, right? We don't usually cover that. Uh, I was recently writing some JavaScript and I came across some stuff in the docs around symbols and I didn't know what it meant, so I figured I would learn and then make a video about it. So that's what this is. Um, I'm a little bit familiar from symbols from Ruby-ish, uh, and it seems like the JavaScript ones are sort of similar. Uh, but anyway, let's jump into it and talk about why they need to exist and then how they work and how you might use them in your own code. Uh, so a little bit of background here. JavaScript has some, it's not exactly a standard library. You kind of think of it as a standard library. There are some standard functions that are customizable. And historically, these functions were customizable by overriding certain named functions on your objects. For instance, uh, json.stringify. This is a thing that takes... Uh, you know, JSON stringifiable objects and gives you back a string. However, you might want to customize how your objects get, you know, JSONified. And in order to do that, you would use a callback function. And JSON stringify is very old, and so it uses the old approach to doing this. Basically, if you have an object and it has a to JSON function on it, uh, which says, I don't know, return hello, hello, hello world. For instance, one, two, three. Uh, and if I were to json.stringify that object, you'll see that it uses our custom callback here, this to JSON function. Now, the problem with this approach is every time one of these callback functions is defined, as the language you know evolves and progresses, uh, it has a chance to collide with existing user code. For instance, JSON at one point in JavaScript history did not exist. A long time ago, I remember you used to ship json2.js to uh, to shim this in old browsers. But anyway, this used to not exist, and it is possible that code written before that had written their own to JSON function that had some sort of different idea than the one that json.stringify wants. Uh, and if you know another language feature came along in JavaScript in the future, it would break existing running code which is tricky because you kind of want to keep existing code uh, working and progress the language at the same time. And so what was decided, what was invented to solve this was symbols. Now, the way symbols work is there are a bunch of predefined symbols for parts of the JavaScript runtime, and they live on this uh, symbol type global thing. Uh, and it has attributes for a bunch of different things here. So things like async iterator, uh, has instance iterator, etc. Uh, these are all provided, well, not all of these, because we'll get to for and key for in a second. Uh, these are provided to allow you to define symbol functions, which are not accessed normally through their name inside objects. Uh, for instance, let's define iterator. Uh, so we're going to define an object. And the way you define these inside of an object is you put square brackets around them. So symbol dot iterator. And we'll map that to a function and uh, a generator function with a little star there uh, that we're just going to yield one, yield two, yield three. Close this here. Oh, we've got an equals over here. And if we do for let i of o, console.log i. You'll see that we've created a function that has a customizable iterator function here. Now, this iterator you'd think might be accessible through its name, and it is not. If you were to try to access this through o.iterator, you'll see that we get undefined. You can only access this by passing in the symbol as your key lookup here to get back that iterator function. And so this allows symbols to have sort of a separate namespace from normal code. The expectation being that normal code will not use symbols to define their attributes, but will instead use just normal strings. Uh, and so this allows the language to add new symboled functions moving forward, basically special protocols that can get in the way. So that's the main idea behind symbol. It also has a few other uses. Uh, the first is that you could use it to create sort of magical singletons, uh, names that you might use in your program separate from normal strings to represent things. And you can do that just by calling symbol with a string. Uh, so this will make a foo symbol. Uh, symbol equals this. And you'll see if we access foo symbol, it'll say that it's a symbol. 
Now note that every call to symbol here creates a new singleton. So if we were to make another symbol called foo and compare that against foo symbol, you'll see that they are not equal. These are two separate symbols. Even if we use triple equals, they are separate symbols here. Uh, and this allows you to basically create as many of these name symbols as you want. Now you might want to make a globally available symbol that anyone can retrieve anywhere. And you can do that by using the dot for function of symbol. And so this will create a global symbol. Uh, let global foo equals this. Uh, and again, global foo is not equal to uh, our previously retrieved symbol. It's in a completely different namespace. But if we were to retrieve another foo symbol from symbol.4, global foo equals symbol.4 foo, you'll see that these are equal. Basically, they've created a global singleton that can be re-referenced and re-retrieved by doing symbol.4. Uh, this can be useful if you wanted to find your own user-defined symbols that other people would uh, implement in the same way. Although you could just assign them to model constants like this, and then you don't need to use this global registry. Uh, the docs also hint at this global registry not necessarily being consistent, nor we're guaranteed to even work at all, so shrugs, who knows. But that's the other way that you can utilize symbols here. Uh, there was also that key for function, symbol dot key for. This allows you to retrieve back the original string from a symbol. And this only works for global symbols, if I remember correctly. If we access this on foo symbol, you'll see we get back undefined. If we access this on symbol dot iterator, we're also going to get undefined. But if we pass in global symbol here, we should get back foo. Oh, is it global foo? Right, I named it differently. Uh, we'll be able to retrieve back the name here. Uh, but anyway, that's symbols. Basically, it allows JavaScript as a language to progress and continually add new protocol-like functionality to objects without clashing with potentially existing user code. Uh, hopefully, you found this useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.